Welcome to another exciting edition of Cammy's Comic Corner. I'm your host as always, Cammy. Now there was a huge week for comics this week. So I had fun. I hope you had fun. Let's talk about how much fun we actually had together, shall we? The pick of the week from DC Comics, we have The Flash number one. Written by Jeff Johns and art by Francis Manipal. Now I have been looking forward to this new series for the longest of times. Especially after the, 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 the horrible, horrible little, little writers and artists coming on these past couple of issues before Johns kept, uh, came back and you know, took a hold of the reins. No thank you other fellow, or uh, fellow, other writers and artists. You, you stay there. You do other projects. Keep your hands off the flash. So we have Barry Allen back in Central City. He's back as a forensics investigator. And it's all about, no, you know, no, no long stuff. It's the smaller crimes. You can get, get it done. Get it quick. Get it out of there. Like the Flash, maybe. Because Central City, they really point out that it's always, everyone's on the go. Everyone's need their caffeine. Everyone's going here, there, there, there. They need everything quickly. So while Barry's back, the rogues are also back, too. And the one death of one of the rogues leads Barry to believe, whoa, 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 what's going on here? And then sure enough, there's other happenings around Central City. He goes to go check it out. Rogues from the future have come back into the past and say, hey, the Flash, you killed one of our buddies. Not yet you haven't, but in the future you will, so you're under arrest, as it kind of were. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. I am loving it. It's the, the art, the gorgeous art, the storytelling. It all flows together nicely. What John did with Green Lantern, he's doing the same with The Flash, and I cannot wait. I am so excited, people. The Flash is back! Bilson and DeMeo, go fuck yourselves. Now on to The Fast Five. First up, from Marvel, we have Siege, Loki, number one. Now, this is uh, by Kieran Gillen and uh, Jamie McKelvey, the creative team of Phonogram. I've always been a huge fan of uh, Jamie McKelvey's art, and he has a little bit of a different twist on his art style in this Loki one-shot. We see Loki before Siege happened, and then during and after Siege, and it shows how he can just take one one thing, uh, trade it to another person, and then with that other person, trade it to another, and make deals all over the place, because he's a god of mischief, and he can have his cake and eat it too, as it were. Um, these allies, uh, uh, the Desir, they kind of, they eat the souls of those between, in purgatory of heaven and hell, for the Vikings world, so he sells them off to Mephisto, uh, and then asks Mephisto for a track of land so he can sell to uh, Hela, who is kind of like the, the demon of the Norse god world. And so all in exchange for that, Hela can't take his soul when he eventually dies. He, they have no control over him. So he, he gets uh, a lot of new souls upcoming because siege is going on, a lot of gods are dying, and they gotta go somewhere, to hell they go. So it was a good one shot. Good Siege tie-in. I, I, I recommend you check this out. Next up from Vertigo, we have Fables number 94. Now we are back in continuity. We are seeing the Blue Fairy uh, trying to go after and kill Geppetto. But whoa, 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 whoa. He is amnesty. He, he, he gets, he, he at all sins, washed and wiped and out. You can't touch him. If you go after him, you go after all of us. So says Beast. And so Beast is able to talk her down off that ledge from killing him and says, listen, listen. In 777 days, he will give himself up willingly. You can have your way with him then. And, you know, if he's not here or he doesn't do it, you can have me as your own personal slave for 777 days. So it's a good deal. Now they have enough time to think up of a plan on how to keep Geppetto and keep Blue Fairy off their back. Meanwhile, Rose Red is still kind of on the road to redemption as uh, the spirits are kind of trying to get her up and active and so she can keep control of the farm. And then Mr. Dark is uh, having his way with the humanity again. And Tau, uh, Totenkinder, uh, Frau Totenkinder, the elderly witch, is kind of discovering some secrets that maybe he doesn't like gold, he can use this against him, who knows. It was a good issue, good to see Fables back on track, and the art by uh, Mark Buckingham is just fantastic as usual. Next up from Marvel, we have Black Widow number one. Now, while the story, I'll just say this up front, didn't capture me, the art sure as hell did. Oh my goodness, Daniel Acuna, please come and, and illustrate my life and illustrate everything I see from now on. His art was throughout this issue, and that's what really, really sold me. Like, you know, it's cool to see uh, Natasha going after this whole Black Rose uh, 
thing. She she gets mailed a black rose, doesn't know what it means. And then someone is operating on her. Someone takes something from her surgically. And now it's up to her friends like Wolverine and Bucky to find out who the killer is. But anyway, it's just the art. Spectacular, spectacular stuff. Blew me away. I melted into a warm pool of goo after I saw it. It was good stuff. Go check it out. Next up from DC, we have Brightest Day Number Zero. Now this is the 52 I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's it's all it's going to be a fairly weekly thing. It's going to be like two issues a month, and it's going to be the backstory of the DC universe. It's by Jeff Johns, Pete Tomasi, and Fernando Passarini or Passarin on art. And you go, you're going to be going and following the people who came back to life. You have Dead Man looking at Aquaman. Uh, you can see Captain Boomerang. Is he going to come back and do good? Um, is uh, Shira and Carter going to be breaking the curse? Is Max Lord having some diabolical plan as usual? Is the Martian Manhunter going to repopulate and restore Mars? Is uh, Jade, she's back, but why? Uh, Osiris, is he going to save Black Adam? And is there a new firestorm in town? And Hawk and Dove, is it going to work in this, you know, updated society? All these questions and more are going to be answered and played with throughout these next couple of, uh, well, this next year, I'm, I'm assuming. I cannot wait. The first Zero issue got me pumped. It was so beautiful. Uh, and I, I have something to look forward to, again, every week. And finally this week from Marvel Max, we have Punisher Max number six. So we get the introduction of Bullseye in the Max universe. Don't know why he wasn't around before. And he is a man who is kind of crazy, but, you know, if you pay him the right amount of money, he will, by any means necessary, go and kill that target. And now we get to see a little bit of his backstory on why he's the best. And when they say, you know, who Frank Castle is, he goes, yeah, yeah, I know he is, but uh, pay whatever you're going to pay me and triple that so I know you're serious about this. And sure enough, he gets a shot off at the end while Frank is trying to take out Wilson Fisk. But it only nicks Frank Castle. Now the hunt is on as he has to follow the blood trail and do what he does best and kill the assigned target. Good stuff. Steve Dillon's art mixes very well with Jason Aaron's story. If you like The Punisher and you don't like Frank and Castle, pick this up instead. Plus, look at that cover by Dave Johnson. So that's it for this week for Kami's Comic Corner. If you want more Kami's Comic Corner goodness, head on over to www.kamiscomiccorner.com. And from there, you can subscribe to us on the RSS feed, on iTunes. Go read the reviews, the book of the month, and check out Geeky Taki. I just uploaded one the other day for Kick-Ass. My thoughts on both, well, my initial thoughts on seeing the movie with Haley Manbat. And then I'll have the video show up later, so, you know, check the site then. Also, check out... DeadlineGraphics.net for all your comic book t-shirt needs. Kelly does custom-made t-shirts, he does comic book t-shirts, he does video game t-shirts, whatever you want on a t-shirt, he can make it possible. There's only one name that I trust, and that's Kelly at DeadlineGraphics.net. And also, huge shout-out to Rising Sun Creations at rsc-online.com. They specialize in the best of U.S. comic books, manga, and collectible toys imported straight from Japan. If you're looking at, you know, want to see the movie Kick-Ass and then see the comic book it was based off of, Go check out their online store and their physical store in Mission Valley if you're in the San Diego area. They do have it in stock. Big thanks. So that does it this week. I've been your host, Cammy. I'm off to go edit some more episodes of future doings. What am I doing? Check the website. Check my Twitter. You might find out a little details on something, something. So yes, go be merry. I don't know. I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this show. Fuck it. Yeah!